Even if you didn't know its name, you've probably seen Amanita muscaria before. It seems like I can't go to the store without seeing it on some sort of like t-shirt or mug or pillow. Amanita. That's like an Asian company too. It's everywhere, dude. It's burned into our subconscious, I swear. There's a lot of propaganda and sensationalism around this mushroom that I truly believe kind of misrepresents it. So I'm here today to give you a comprehensive breakdown of Amanita muscaria so that you can empower yourself with that knowledge if you do choose to interact with this thing. So I've tried a lot of psychoactive substances in my life and Amanita is one that I've interacted with quite a bit. So this is actually a legal mushroom to buy, possess, and sell here in the United States in every state except for Louisiana. And there's a really interesting sort of new market developing around it. Unfortunately, a lot of that new market is pretty shady, and I actually just made a video about the sort of weird Amanita and mushroom gummy phenomenon going on right now in this country, if you would like to go and check that out. Amanita seems to provide both this really potent sort of psychoactive effect and, you know, adaptogenic effects as well too. There's a lot of alkaloids within this mushroom, but there are three that are thought to be kind of the primary constituents of the experience. The first is muscimol, the second is ibotenic acid, and the third is muscarine. Muscimol has activity at your GABA receptors, and it seems to be really good for relaxation, etc sedating, it's really good for your sleep, helps with anxiety, things like that. Ibotenic acid is more glutaminergic, so it can actually be a little bit more stimulating, if you will, and can help you focus. Muscarine seems to interact with our acetylcholine receptors in such a way where it's potentially a very potent nootropic. So as you can see here, there's this really kind of crazy entourage effect going on with this mushroom. And on top of all this, it seems to have its own unique sort of anti-inflammatory properties as well. They did a study on a particular Amanita muscaria extract and found that it potentiates the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, cytokines, cytokines. But essentially, this study suggests that Amanita muscaria extracts can modify HMC3 inflammatory responses possibly due to their trehalose content. So, really interesting stuff. One interesting thing about this mushroom is that it seems to be helping people get off of benzodiazepines and alcohol. Benzodiazepine addiction is quietly becoming and or already has become like the next opioid epidemic. In 2021 alone, there was like 90 million benzodiazepine prescriptions filled in this country. Some health professionals warn addiction to anti-anxiety medication is a growing epidemic. Roughly one in eight American adults use this kind of medication. And this is a class of drugs that is extremely hard to get off of. It can lead to brutal withdrawals and can even kill you if you don't taper off of it correctly. As you can imagine, this leads to people either not quitting benzos and or they'll have to deal with withdrawals that can last for several years, by the way, and or they can end up dying. Amanita's interesting interaction with our GABA and other receptor sites is probably why it's helping people with this. And the nice thing about Amanita is that it seems to provide people with this sort of GABAnergic relaxation without leading to withdrawals and addiction. Of course, I do believe that you can get addicted to just about anything, so please stay like mindful of your consumption with this thing. So now you're probably wondering like, what does this mushroom feel like and can it actually make me trip? At lower doses, Amanita seems to provide this sort of very functional stress relief. Um, and so people find it to be a very useful tool for both anxiety, and for sleep. And there's a lot of people who take it like every day or close to every day because of this. And now at medium to higher doses, the experience does change quite a bit. Things can get dissociative, scary, mystical, insightful, confusing, all of that, all at the same time. Like these experiences are not meant to be taken lightly. What typically happens on these larger doses is that you end up falling into this sort of a dissociative state, which then leads to a very heavy slumber people fall asleep in this slumber, and they usually go straight into these extremely vivid dream states. I mean, that's not a blanket statement. It's not, I can't guarantee that that's what you will experience, but anecdotally, that is what most people report. And so yes, Amanita can make you trip in the sense that it can provide this experience, which is both potentially, you know, insightful and healing, but can potentially be like traumatizing and scary at the same time. But the experience itself does not feel very similar to tripping on like say a serotonergic psychedelic like psilocybin or LSD. Um, 
to me, it honestly feels a little bit more similar to something like ketamine, like a dissociative. But once again, this is just my subjective experience with the higher doses. It would be disingenuous for me to tell you exactly what you're going to experience. A lot of the sensationalism and fear mongering around this mushroom is centered around this idea that has been put forth and echoed by others that Amanita muscaria is toxic or poisonous. And truth be told, it's really not that much more toxic than lots of other things that we choose to regularly interact with. I mean, undercooked meat kills thousands of people every year, but we still choose to interact with meat. We just, you know, do so in a sort of educated and informed way. It doesn't mean that meat is bad. It doesn't mean that chicken is bad. It just means that someone taking a very large dose of raw uncooked chicken could potentially lead to some pretty bad things. And this is sort of the same thing that's happened with Amanita. People in the past have taken large doses of this mushroom, you know, in an uneducated manner, raw, gotten a very large dose of ibotenic acid and then had bad experiences and or been hospitalized. And of course the media jumps in, they, they capture these stories, they sensationalize them, and then Amanita is pointed to as the bad guy, stay away, toxic. But truth be told, you can take medium to larger doses of Amanita and it be very, very safe. Uh, people do it all the time. You just have to, kind of like the chicken, you have to prepare it correctly. So if you're wanting to take a medium to larger dose of Amanita, you have to do something that is called decarb. You have to, you have to decarb your Amanita, which is essentially the process of making a lemon tea out of it. And I'll include some resources and tutorials of how you do that. But um, what this does is it converts a large amount, it converts some of, if not most of, the ibotenic acid in the mushroom into muscimol. Ibotenic acid is an interesting compound because like I said earlier, at lower doses it seems to help people kind of focus, it can, it, it can be stimulating, it has this glutaminergic slightly dissociative effect to it, um, but if you take very very large doses of it, most people don't tolerate that very well. Um, but with that being said, <laughs> this is not a recommendation, but I do know individuals who purposely take large doses of ibotenic acid because they like that experience and they claim that the full spectrum Amanita experience is different than the decarbed. But once again, if you're just getting into this sort of thing, I highly recommend you start with uh, a decarb and take some of that ibotenic acid down. We're living in a society where many of us are sick, you know, we're stressed out, we're not sleeping well. In Newsflash, if you are not sleeping well, then you are virtually selling yourself short in every aspect of your health. So here comes this little mushroom, which through the utilization of you know nature's intelligence and the entourage effect of these alkaloids, it seems to be providing people with relief in a non-addictive way. I would say just between like the sleep thing, the anxiety and the benzodiazepine, like just that alone shows you that this mushroom has a lot of potential to heal people, but its benefits, its potential benefits, I should say, reach much further than just the sleep, anxiety, and benzos. You know, some people claim it has unique uh, potential as a sacramental tool, and I can see how using the right context, it definitely could be. But it's like everything else, it needs to be understood and respected in order for you to effectively add this thing to your tool belt. If you'd like to try out some Amanita Muscaria for yourself, then you should head over to our company's website, Minnesota Nice Ethnobotanicals. We simply offer the best Amanita caps and Amanita products at the best price. Um, if you find somebody else who does it better, please let me know because you're going to be hard pressed. Amanitas actually can't be grown and so the whole sort of game around the market here in the United States of Amanita is the sourcing of it because they have to be wild harvested, wild foraged. Um, and so we work with a bunch of different families across the world but in particular the Eastern European region for us is a hot spot because you know there's a lot of Amanita there and we work with a lot of the families uh, to get the Amanita harvested far away from civilization. It's a beautiful relationship because we get really high quality, great Amanitas that we're able to pass on to you guys. But then these families, in a matter of just a few months, they're able to make enough money for like the entire year. So you're not only supporting us, you're supporting these families and you're supporting the mushroom. If you don't believe me, then please check out some of our reviews or just like go on to Reddit and see what people have to say about Amanita Muscaria or about our website, Minnesota Nice Ethnobotanicals. I hope you found this video to be informative and useful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and all that stuff. But yeah, other than that, peace out. Much love, everybody.